Hi, I'm starting a series exploring the history of lesbian literature. From Sappho to Annie on my mind, we've been writing down our experiences for just as long as straight people have. I personally find it really important to connect with my history and what better way to do that than to read the words of the woman who wrote it down years and years ago. So today I have decided to focus on one of the most famous and one of the most controversial lesbian novels. The Will of Loneliness. The Will of Loneliness was published in 1928 and was written by the British author Radcliffe Hall. It is regarded as one of the first, if not the first, explicit lesbian novel in the English language. It follows a butch lesbian named Stephen Gordon, who is born to extremely wealthy parents in a rural area. As she grows up, um, falls in love with various women, discovers the love of writing, and pursues relationships. Stephen's homosexuality and gender nonconformity are a central focus of the book. Um, these are presented as completely natural and ingrained parts of it, and are also apparent from a young age. As a child, Stephen prefers to wear more traditionally masculine clothing and engage in more stereotypically masculine activities, and she also falls in love with a housemaid named Collins at the age of seven. Her father accepts her gender nonconformity and essentially gives her free reign, but her mother is less pleased about it. After her father's death, she is outed as a lesbian to her ex-lover Angela, and this leads to her moving away to London and in turn to Paris. Also, she becomes an ambulance driver in the First World War for like 20 pages. It's kind of weird how quickly that happens, uh, but sure, Radcliffe, sure. Radcliffe Hall wrote for well in an attempt to break the public silence around homosexuality and to also, and I quote, spur all classes of inverts to make good through hard work and sober and useful living. I'm not quite sure what she meant by that, but the inverts she makes reference to here are the gays. Radcliffe Hall was a very strong believer in the theory of sexual inversion, which basically proposed the idea that homosexuality was caused by an inborn reversal of gender traits. Basically, it believed that all gay men were feminine and all lesbians were masculine. The theory is obviously untrue and is a huge, huge bucket of yikes to look at today. But because it more or less suggested that homosexuality was inherent and unchangeable in some people, some LGBT people at the time accepted the theory, including Radcliffe Hall. Throughout the novel, Stephen is described as an invert and it is very apparent that Radcliffe Hall sees her as such, with even her love of writing and her love of sports being arguably connected to her male soul. A few people have tried to argue that The Well of Loneliness is actually a transgender narrative rather than a lesbian one, which I personally disagree with, but with all the talk of how Stephen is a man at heart, it's really not difficult to believe. At its publication, as you can imagine, The Well was met with a huge wave of backlash from people with some less than pleasant views on lesbianism. James Douglas, the editor for the Sunday Times, wrote an article just a month after the book was published, calling for its immediate ban. He wrote, I would rather give a healthy boy or a healthy girl a vial of prusic acid than this book. Poison kills the body, but moral poison kills the soul. After this completely horrific article was published, the book's publisher, Jonathan Cape, sent a copy of it to the notoriously conservative Home Secretary at the time, William Joynton Hicks. Joynton Hicks demanded that the book be pulled from circulation immediately and threatened Cape with potential legal proceedings. Cape did not do this, but rather licensed the book secretly to the publishing company Pegasus Press, and with all the new publicity that the well had gotten from Douglas's article, it sold really quickly. 
However, the Home Office then noticed and began to seize shipments of the book. This censorship, which happened before any legal proceedings, was protested by many people, including such prominent figures as H.G. Wells, George Bernard Shaw, and Blunard Wolf, Virginia Woolf's husband. When a trial did take place later, the book was condemned for obscenity and copies of it were destroyed. It wasn't banned in America though, despite legal challenges, and it wasn't banned in Paris either. The Will of Loneliness had the Will of Loneliness had a huge impact anyway, despite the British ban, as the legal battle had led to even more publicity for it. In the study of working class lesbians in New York in the 1940s and 50s, The Will of Loneliness appeared to be the only lesbian novel that any of them were familiar with. It was a source of information about lesbianism for many young women, and I think this may have opened it up to more criticism as a poor or unrealistic depiction of lesbian life could be potentially dangerous if this was the only representation people were getting. It has been criticised both in the modern day and several decades ago for poor representation, particularly due to its emotional themes and its portrayal of gender expression. As you can probably tell from its title, The Well of Loneliness is a very sad book, steeped in tragedy and, well, loneliness. It includes some absolutely heart-wrenching things, and ends with a plea. Then rise up and defend us, acknowledge us, O God, before the whole world. Give us also the right to our existence. Stephen does not end up finding happiness with another woman, and over the course of the novel is constantly presented as sad, lonely, and somewhat self-hating. It seems to be, in my opinion, an early example of creating abject misery around queer narratives in order to make straight people sympathise, rather than including both good and bad experiences and creating a more balanced perspective on LGBT life. I did personally find that it reflected a lot of my experiences as a non-binary butch lesbian, but that doesn't mean that all of its representation is good. It's really difficult to read at some points. It's unsatisfying, and it's it, even in some really romantic moments, it is completely unromantic. Over the course of the story, Stephen has two main romantic relationships, one with a married woman named Angela and one with a younger woman named Mary. It's clear that these two women do not share Stephen's gender expression and are more feminine, and this is, that the way they're presented is questionable at best. Angela uses Stephen to ward off her boredom and takes advantage of her feelings for her, and then betrays her trust completely by outing her. So, she can be easily seen as playing into the traitorous femme archetype, where a femme woman is untrustworthy and eventually leaves her lesbian lover for her man. Paul's portrayal of Mary as well is arguably misogynistic, as Mary is heavily dependent on her more masculine lover and is constantly infantilised by both Stephen and the narrative. The criticism doesn't stop there though, it's also been criticised, amongst other things, for an unrealistic depiction of Paris's gay scene and also potential biphobia. The well did have an important role in increasing lesbian visibility, although in this context that's not necessarily a good thing. In the study of lesbians in Salt Lake City during the 1920s and 30s, almost all of them regretted the publishing of The Well of Loneliness due to it bringing unwanted attention onto them. In James Douglas's article, a picture of Radcliffe Hall was used to illustrate it. In this picture, she was wearing a smoking jacket, a bow tie, and a knee-length skirt, although the picture was cropped so it was unclear quite whether she was wearing a skirt or trousers. This style wasn't particularly scandalous in the 1920s, as short hair was common and 
tailored jackets and skirts were a recognised fashion. From all the publicity from the Well of Loneliness, though, people began to recognise Radcliffe Hall's specific signature style as a sign of lesbianism, which drew some of those who wore it under scrutiny. Some women did find that they enjoyed wearing this style, and some used it as a form of signalling other lesbians. The, the lesbian journalist Evelyn Irons said that truck drivers would call out to women on the street that they saw wearing collars and ties, Oh, you miss Radcliffe Hall! The publicity, however, probably led to some positive discussion of lesbian topics, but we never really know. It also left British authorities cautious of censoring another lesbian novel, just in case it led to a repeat of the same publicity that surrounded the world of loneliness, which they saw as promoting lesbianism to the people. And yeah, all the criticism isn't to say that people haven't found solace in the book. A Holocaust survivor said, Remembering that book, I wanted to live long enough to kiss another woman. It evoked strong emotional responses, both positive and negative, and no matter what you think about the book, one thing can't be denied. It had impact. I'm Ray, and this is the history of lesbian literature. Like, subscribe if you want, uh, leave a comment if you want me to cover anything in particular. I'll see you later.